Good morning, I'm in Beverly. Uh, I'm heading up the east coast, about 100 miles to a town called Seaham uh, in County Durham. Uh, Seaham uh, used to be uh, the site of a bottle factory and they used to make all sorts of uh, different types of bottles, perfume bottles, all sorts of bottles, different colours. Uh, and what they used to do is all the reject bottles or surplus bottles or whatever type of bottles it was, they used to dump them in the North Sea. Um, the factory's no longer there, but the dumped glass is still around. Uh, and in fact, over the period of a hundred years or so, it has become like very smooth, like pebbles. And this town is now known as kind of the Mecca of um, collecting glass for making jewelry with. So I thought I would take a trip up there and see for myself. But on the way, I'm planning at the moment to stop at Whitby and have a look at the Abbey there. Situated, so it's here in North Yorkshire overlooking the North Sea there and Whitby is just over there Which it just looks incredible because it's in like this amazing estuary This big cutout of the landscape and all the buildings are layered. It looks lovely. It's quite interesting that Henry VIII uh, During the dissolution of monasteries between 1536 and 1545 kind of took all the possessions from this place. I don't know what he thought how he thought that was fixing anything. Notable burials here. Um, Hilda of Whitby, famous Hilda, she's, she's here. And um, who else have we got here? Lots of people that I've never heard of. Uh, William de Percy, the first Baron Percy, uh, 1096, and Richard de Percy. So that's William and Richard, they're both here. That's Dickie and, and Bill. This, as a fishing port, Whitby sort of emerged during the, um, the middle um, ages because it had such good catches of herring and uh, lots of there used to be lots of whaling fleets here um, still a massive fishing port uh, in fact this morning I can see all the trawlers heading out um, the tide is actually going out at the moment so they'll probably be back when the tide comes back in not a lot of people know this well obviously quite a few people know it because it's recorded in history but um, Captain Cook uh, learned how to be a, a seaman here apparently uh, you know I'm trusting Wikipedia I mean hopefully Wikipedia is properly cited now every year there is what's called the Whitby goth weekend where the whole town is taken over by gothic people and uh, these are these are a rare species uh, these days but they quite often seem to be more into steampunk and industrial music now but the, the goths come here and they hang out and they walk around and they scare everybody uh, and the reason they come here is because of the link that uh, Whitby has to Bram Stoker's Dracula uh, where part of the novel is based here. This is the story of Dracula, a creature who destroys all whom he touches. <laughs> I can understand how how a place like this would capture the imaginations of, of goths because it's got the most amazing graveyard he just just here gothic 7th century monastery behind us and uh, it's just a very dramatic very um, gothic -y place so uh, I think they're very welcome when they come here people living in Whitby welcome the Goths uh, not only does it generate a lot of income for the people here but uh, Goths are nice people so be nice to a Goth This stuff's going to be pretty expensive to whoever I sell it to. I find that you literally have to go on the wet stones and shift them to the side. Don't get rid of all the big ones, which is tiring by the way. 
and then just have a sift around at what's left and if you're lucky you might find a tiny fragment of something it's almost odd that people are allowed to come and collect glass down here because I can't find any not yet anyhow although I have just arrived and I'm thinking that it kind of spoils it a little bit that people are just picking up all the glass because that little bit of history is going to be obliterated because eventually it's all going to be cleaned up uh, and I'm told it's been a hundred years so I'm not sure they do say this is the mecca for uh, glass collecting on beaches but I've got to be honest with you I've just arrived I've been well 10 minutes I've not seen any but I am seeing people with big bags collecting lots of stuff down there so maybe maybe I'm not looking in the right place just keep looking and looking and looking I'm not finding anything this is uh, really hard I thought this would just be a sea of glass or a whole beach full of glass and it's not There's a piece, look, right there. Look at that. Whoopie do. Whoopie do. I don't even like it. I think the Mecca analogy might be a little bit pushing it. Certainly not anymore. Everyone's nicked the glass. It's all on Etsy. Thousand pounds to the nearest bite. See how it's like translucent and sort of frosted. I'll polish that up a bit with my Dremel and uh, see how it go but I'm quite pleased with that just because of its shape there's the pounds I'm still looking I've got a stick so I highly recommend if you do come down here get a stick because your balance is thrown over you'll find yourself digging your heel in and scuffing the, the dry stones aside to get to the smaller wet ones uh, underneath and you'll use your foot to push them aside as I have been doing and I thought why don't I just get a stick I'm ruining my shoes so now I have a stick to root around in plus often walking on these stones you will uh, uh, be tempted to fall over so the stick's a little safety net to so get a stick and if I was coming here again I would probably bring waders with me and I would uh, walk up in the sort of half meter part because I think that's where all the fresh stones are you know what, I think I've, I found another green one. Uh, I'm, I think what I'm doing here, which is just plunking myself down in one spot, I'm just gently raking over the small stones, the dry stones on top to get to the wet stones. The wet stones tells me either it's been raining or they, they've been put, the sea comes right up to the wall, which I think it does. So these are all gonna get moved around easy. Well, what surprised me is how small these things are. Uh, perhaps people are finding bigger ones, but I'm only finding very small, like sea ham glass, and mainly white. So I got a bit. There's a big white one there. So and that's flat. But it's. Um, I'm thinking here that I might slightly grind them down and shape them with a very fine uh, grind on my uh, Dremel, and then I'll polish them like crazy and see how they come out and see what happens and what's fun about doing this because you know I speak to my friend earlier and he was saying it's a very uh, feminine thing to be doing uh, but as I said it's this um it's therapeutic doing this and it's treasure hunting and you know treasure hunting forms the basis of so many movies and storytelling but actually oh I just missed one but to actually get out here and um, find these little bits of treasure that are worth something to someone and they should be worth something to someone because they're a nightmare to find we should go for top dollar it's just it's just fun i'm enjoying it i'm i own i saw a youtuber who does this and they were saying that you should um you should wear listen to music while you do it i'd say don't listen to music There's trickles of water going all the way down and there's water dripping over there. This is a fresh mudslide here. And with it bearing over you the way it does, it's very easy to see why this, how this could uh, hurt you. I mean, this, this, this piece here, look. It's not, it's not a good idea to stand here. 
because I don't know but it doesn't feel safe it doesn't look safe but because there's no sign saying hey everyone this area that looks really not safe it's not safe there's no signs that says it's not safe so I've, I'm, I'm assuming it's perfectly safe it's so tempting to go in that cave for example look I want to go in there should I go in there or oh, that one there goes right through I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna go through. Probably shouldn't. I'm going through the cave. Coming through. Oh my god. Oh as you come through here, look at this on the ground here. Slop, muddy slop. Big pile of slop. That's just mud. That is, looks like it's fresh today. Big pile of it come down from here. So I'm gonna get uh, get the heck out of here. Back to safety. Right, let's have a look at what I've actually found today. I'm grabbing most of them, not all of them, but most of them. There you go. That's what I got today. You see that? Now, to me, they're pretty small. Uh, and they're all kind of similar colour. Kind of look greeny, actually. Uh, I'm not really sure if people like these to be left frosted like this or whether they'd like them to be polished up. I'm going to polish them up and see have a little tester but uh, I, I, I have to say I'm a bit disappointed uh, they should be really expensive these and also if you think about it, stones pebbles are so much older than the glass. The glass was you know made a hundred years ago every pebble you can see here is like millions of years old we should be hanging these from our necks. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you've got any tips about finding glass on beaches, let me know. But uh, I'm kind of getting into this treasure hunting game, so I might do this again. But otherwise, I think I'll see if anyone's selling it on eBay. Uh, I'm sure they are. Bye.